Hello, I'm Colin and this is my wife Anne and we live in Loughton. We're Zoom and WhatsApp and uh, YouTube members of Restore and we are so looking forward to getting back to uh, meeting people in, uh, in person. Today we're going to be reading from the NIV version of the Bible. We're going to be reading from John chapter 4 verses 15 to 30. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, You are right when you say that you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshippers must worship in the spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I am I the one speaking to you. I am he. Then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or why are you talking to her? Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to her people, come, see a man who told me everything I've ever done. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of their town and then made their way towards him. So today we now pray for Lauren, who is going to uh, be speaking to us. We pray, Lord, that you will give Lauren the right words and the right visions to share with us and to uh, take us through this passage. Amen. Amen. Hello, everyone, and thank you for that incredible reading. Uh, my name's Lauren. I'm so excited to be with you guys today. Woo! And thank you, Ian. And um, I'm going to be talking to you about reaching others through um, spiritual gifts. And as we've just heard in that story that was so beautifully read to us of the woman at the well, there's a really poignant part in the story where as Jesus is talking to this woman, he says, go and get your husband and then I'll tell you everything you want to know. And he has what's called a word of knowledge about her because he knows that she actually has five husbands and she's not living with a man who's her husband either. And it's this moment in this story that completely breaks the woman open. And it says, I see you. I see your life. There's no condemnation for your life, but I see where you're at. I see the need that you have. And I love you despite what might be going on in the world. And I see that need and I want to meet that need. And so we're going to be talking specifically about the spiritual gift of words of knowledge. And I'm not going to talk too long right now because we want to make time to put this into practice and to um, actually ask for words of knowledge for each other, which is going to be a lot of fun. So I'm not going to be going on at you a lot right now. I'm just going to go over and cover some of um, what the Bible says about words of knowledge so that you know that we're being legit and then we're going to do it. So... If we, if we look at words of knowledge, we know that Jesus used them. I've already told you one example in the story of the woman at the well. Um, in John 4, there's another really cool example of when uh, Jesus gets a word of knowledge about Nathaniel. And he says to him, hey, I saw you sitting under the fig tree. I saw you when you were questioning your faith. Um, and he says, you know, here is a man of God, a man of no deceit. He knows everything about this man that he's never met before. And it causes Nathaniel to take a step back and to be like, how do you know me? That's his response. How do you know me? Because a word of knowledge reveals that you're known. It reveals that 
I've had revelation about you that I could not have known any other way but then a God who is alive, a God who wants to reach into your heart and say, I love you, I know you, I see you, and I've come to meet you in your need right now. And so we know that Jesus uses them. And guess what? We're then told in the New Testament by Paul that we are to use this spiritual gift as well. And I tell you what, for me, it makes Christianity a whole lot of fun. And Christianity is not super boring, it's really fun. So we're going to be engaging in this today all together. We're going to take a risk, we're going to put ourselves out there. And I know that God is going to come through for us and do some really amazing things. So get ready for that. In, um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks to us about the spiritual gifts. And that's where it talks about the gift of the word of knowledge. And a word of knowledge, as I said earlier, is something where God gives us revelation about something that we would not have otherwise known. And it's something that is true right now. So it's not, it's not um, a prophecy which is about the future, but it's about something that the person in front of you can say yes or no to right now. So if anyone here has got a cat called Barney, for example, that would be a word of knowledge about your cat because it's either true or it's not. So if you do put it on the live chat, by the way, and then I'll, you know, we can ask the Lord. Um, but yeah, so we, we're asking God for something that's true about a person right now. And the reason that we do that is not to show off, hey, look at me, I'm a great Christian, I hear God's voice, and I'm better than you. <laughs> we do it because 1 Corinthians um, chapter 13 tells us that we do everything in love that all the spiritual gifts are nothing if they're not done in love. And the word of knowledge is such a specific way to reach someone with love, to say, I see you and I know you and I love you. And that's what we want to do today. We want to love people well by letting them know that they're known and loved by a God who never gives up on them, who never stops pursuing them, who wants to heal them, even if you've experienced a long time of not having healing, I believe God wants to heal you today. I believe that you are not left behind. I believe that he sees you in the valley and he sees you on the mountain. That he wants to meet you where you're at and he wants to fulfill every need of your heart, every desire that you have on the inside. He's there and he wants to encounter you today. And that's what we're going to be doing. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I just want to explain as well that when you get a word of knowledge for someone, I believe that God gives us the grace to see the breakthrough for that person as well. Because there's a reason that he tells us something about someone. I don't believe he tells us just so we can say, hey, I know your life. But he tells us because he wants to give us the breakthrough for this person. So if it's... Our, for an example, if it's a word about healing, I believe it's because he wants to heal, not because he just wants to say, hey, I see you in pain there. Hope you're okay. <laughs> like, he, he wants so much more than that. He's saying, I see you in pain and I want to bring healing. If he says, hey, I see that you're not living your life the way that um, is best for you, like the woman at the well, there's no condemnation. He's saying, I see you and I love you, and I want to give you what your heart desires, which is faithful, true relationship for that woman at the well. And it's such a beautiful thing to watch as people hear their story being told by God and saying, yeah, I'm seen and I'm known, I'm valued. I want to share a couple of stories with you guys um, because one of, the things, one of the questions that I get the most is, well, how do I do it? How do I hear from God? How do I get a word of knowledge? What does it mean to hear the voice of God for someone else or for myself? So we're going to go through some quick top tips with you guys about how we can hear the voice of God. I'm going to share some stories with you and then we're going to sing a song. We're going to give some time to listen to God and then we're going to get into it and we're going to um, ask God for some words of knowledge. So what are some of the ways that we can hear God's voice? This is a good question. Because there are a whole bunch of different ways. 
And I just want you to know that there is no one way that just because your friend hears God one way, that doesn't mean that you're not hearing God because you hear it another way. And so here are some examples. Some people will, will feel it in their body. So they'll get sympathy pains for people. So uh, friends of mine, they'll be walking down the street and they'll suddenly get pain in their knee, for example. And they'll know this pain is not my pain. This pain belongs to someone that I've obviously just walked past. And they will, they will go and stop that person and say, hey, do you have knee pain? Um, and pray for them. <laughs> um, but it might, you know, if you feel pain in your body, that's usually God giving you a sign, a word of knowledge. Some people, they see it. So they'll see pictures in their mind, in their mind's eye. Uh, some people will, you can ask God to show you kind of like a silhouette of a person and just highlight on that silhouette where someone might have pain. Some people will get a picture or they'll get an impression or like a, a movie playing in their mind of something that God wants to say. Other people will dream about it. Obviously, hopefully, we won't do that one today. Otherwise, you need to have a really quick nap now um, in time for when we're activating ourselves. But a lot of people will have dreams that God tells them things. They'll tell them people's names or something that's going to happen. A lot of people have dreams about natural disasters so that they can pray. Because God tells us something so we can pray. Never leave it just at that. If he tells you something, never just say, oh, that's cool. Like, pray. What am I supposed to do with this, God? Am I supposed to talk to someone? Am I just supposed to pray? Tell me what I'm supposed to do with this word that you've given to me. There's loads of other ways. Um, some people think, so you would just get a random thought, a random memory, a random Bible verse. And God uses that. You think it's just, oh, my mind is going a bit wild, or I'm just randomly thinking of that. Well, why would you be randomly thinking about that at this exact moment in time after you've asked God to talk to you? <laughs> so I believe that that's God's voice speaking to you through a memory. One of the ways God's talked to me is through people recognition. When I look at someone and I'm like, oh, they're just like so-and-so. And usually there's a reason he's doing that because there's something in my friend that I know that he's wanting to draw out in this person. He talks to me through number plates, Loads of everything. He can talk to you through everything, nature and coincidences and, yes, number plates and billboards and your friends and TV. He can literally talk to you through everything. So I want to encourage you, be aware of your body. Be aware of the things that you see and you read and just give yourself time to listen. There's so much to take in in the world right now. But give yourself time to say, God, are you speaking to me? When you feel that really little nudge on the inside of you that you think, oh, it's probably nothing. I tell you, it's not nothing. It's the Holy Spirit talking to you. And as you train yourself more and more to not ignore those nudges, it becomes easier and easier and easier every day to hear the voice of God and to know that he's speaking to you and to not, not ignore those nudges that happen to you. So I just want to encourage you guys that even throughout the week, I, I want you to be aware of what you're looking at, what you're listening to, what you're feeling in your body, what you're seeing, all of it, that you would be aware that God wants to speak to you through everything and that he is speaking to you through everything. And I would say to you, if you feel like you're one of those people that says, I don't think God's speaking to me, well, his first language is not English. So he's probably speaking to you in another way. And we need to train our senses to be able to hear his voice and be open to hearing it in a way that's not always just the audible voice of God. Some people get that. I remember um, a friend of mine, he says, well, I, I, usually, um, I only usually hear the audible voice of God maybe once a day. And I was thinking, <laughs> OK, you know that's not... That should be normal, but you know that's not normal, right? Because he was saying it like it was a bad thing. It's usually only once a day, guys. And I'm like thinking, this is incredible. That's amazing. And just be aware that, yes, he does that for my friend, but I've only ever heard it maybe twice in my entire life. That's not the main way that he chooses to talk to me. 
he usually talks to me through my gut feelings and I'm just aware of things or I have random thoughts and memories and I know that he uses that. So as I said, we have to practice. So I'm going to encourage you guys that after we do some activities today together, I want you to spend the week practicing. I'm giving you homework, okay? And I'm going to be taking it in at the end of the week and I want to hear about what you've been doing. I want to hear about the testimonies that have happened of where you have opened yourself and attuned yourself to the voice of God and the things that he said to you. Because he's not always going to be speaking to you for other people. A lot of the time, he's just wanting to say, I love you. I love you today. Or to just, you know, pour out his delight on you or tell you something about your life, your business or your family, your friends and about your role within that, it's not always going to be for other people. But today we are going to be asking for other people. But just keeping yourself open to that. So, the Bible says that if we ask anything in his name, he'll give it to us. So how do you receive the gift of the Spirit that is words of knowledge? I believe we ask. And then through faith, we believe that we have received. And it's as simple as that. Oftentimes, we wait until we see an outworking of something to believe that we've received the gift. But we receive it by faith, and then we outwork what we've received. So I'm just going to pray right now that we receive the gift of words of knowledge. So... I don't know if you want to kind of put your hands out or be in some sort of I'm receiving mode, but I'm just going to pray for us that we receive. So, Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are the giver of gifts. And I thank you that you love to give good gifts to your children and that when we ask, you give them to us. And so right now, I ask that you give us the gift of words of knowledge to hear you specifically for people and by faith we say we receive in Jesus name amen nice and easy cool so I'm just going to share some stories with you and um, yeah I just want to build faith in you for what's possible with God and and also share that it doesn't always, I don't always get it right, guys. Literally yesterday, I was out with some friends at the park and we were chatting to a guy and I felt God say, he's got pain in his right knee. And so I just said to him, hey, random question, do you get pain in your right knee? No. Oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> and he's like, why? Why? Why are you asking me this? I was like, oh, I, I was just going to offer to pray for you. I, I see a lot of people get healed, and I, I thought you had a problem with your knee, but you don't, so that's fine. And he was like, no, I don't have any issue with my knee. I've got an issue with my heart, though. I was like, would you like me to pray for you? No. And then he left. <laughs> End of conversation. And you know what? I'm, I'm fine. And it was fine. And actually, he was such a nice guy, and I waved at him later on in the day, and it wasn't awkward. And, you know, just, I just want to put that out there because sometimes we can hear stories and we can think, I could never do that. Or this must be their life every day. It's not. It's me taking risks every day. It's me practicing every day. And a lot of the time I get it wrong. But I tell you it's worth it for the times when I don't. And for the times when people meet Jesus, for the times that they get healed by Jesus and encounter him. It's worth it every time. And so I just want to share a couple of stories about the impact that words of knowledge can have. So I'm going to share one about salvation, um, one about bringing clarity into people's lives, and another one where I get it wrong. Well, it wasn't me that got it wrong, but I've already shared one with you where I did. So um, a really cool salvation story actually happened in this building um, in the back room. And when we, I first started using this building a year, I can't even remember, two years ago. And um, I was running some classes here and there was a lady that came and she did the cleaning for the building. And as she was leaving one day, we were just chatting to her in her car and um, just asking her about her day. And my friend with me said, hey, are you a singer? Is that something you're really passionate about? 
And she said, yes. And she said, oh, I don't know how you know that, but yeah, that's a real dream of mine. And that was kind of the end of the conversation. So she left. And then the next week, she was here again, obviously, to clean while we were here. And she came up to us and said, you know, tell me a bit more about how did you know about this singing and, and where did you get that from? Is it uh, like, are you a psychic? Are you this? Are you that? And we just told her about Jesus and Holy Spirit and how he tells us those things because he loves her and he sees her and he sees her passion and he wants to draw that out of her. And it was just such a beautiful exchange of us telling her all about how Holy Spirit talks to us and loves us. And, um, and afterwards we asked her, do you want to invite Jesus into your life? And she said, yeah, I do. And she gave her life to Jesus. It was absolutely beautiful. And then the next day she came in and she brought her son. And um, actually, no, it was the same day. She said, I'm coming back. I'm coming back with my son in an hour. She came back and the son, he was probably like seven. I'm not good with ages. He was young. And he said, I had a dream last night that I was supposed to come into this building today because something important was going to happen. And he gave his life to Jesus and he prayed and he was just absolutely incredible. And his sister, uh, the, the woman's daughter, she was at home. She had rheumat uh, rheumatoid arthritis. She hadn't been able to go to school in a, in a couple of weeks. She barely got out of bed. She was constantly on pain meds for most of her life. Really, really painful. And we prayed for her in this room. We just said, let's just pray for her that she'll get completely healed. And from that day on, she has never taken any more pain medication. And she was completely healed. Yeah. Just amazing. And she's come in and we've met her and she's just the most beautiful girl. And she's prayed and given her life to Jesus as well. And all of that came out of the simplicity of a word of knowledge that said, God, who is this woman? And he said, she's a singer. And, and it really is that easy. And uh, uh, another story, I'm going to invite the band up to just come and play while, because we're going to sing a song in a minute, but um, while I share some more stories. So another story is about how God brings clarity to us through words of knowledge. So I was, um, I was at an event. We were running a, an event where we were doing uh, rooftop worship. We were worshipping over London on a rooftop while we were praying over London. It was beautiful and it was amazing. And there was a guy there who at the end, he said, hey, I want to share a story. And he shared with us about how he lived in the block of flats over the road from where we were. And as we started singing the first song, it, he said, that was my favourite worship song. And so I thought, I want to go to this event, whatever it is, I want to go. I don't have a ticket, but I'm going to go anyway. And he said, so I just followed the sound and I found the building and I walked up all the flights of stairs and I got to the top and the door was locked. And he was like, oh, OK, I'm going to just walk back home. And he got back down, started walking back home. And he said, God said to me, go back, push the door and it will open for you. And so back he goes up all the stairs. There was no lift. And uh, all the way up, it gets to the top. It's still locked, but he pushes it and the door opens and he comes up to the roof and he worships with us. And he shares this story at the end and everyone's like, oh, that's incredible. Oh, thank you, Jesus, how you did that and you made a way. And God said to me, um, I've got something to tell him and I want you to go and tell him. And I said, okay, cool, what is it? He said, I'll tell you when you get there. Okay, cool, thanks. So I went over to him and I said, um, I really believe God wants to say something to you today. Um, and he said, yeah, OK, what is it? And I said, I don't know yet. But if you let me pray for you, I believe he'll tell me. And so he let me pray. And as I was praying, I just suddenly had this thing of, he's really unhappy at his job. And actually, in fact, he's so unhappy that he wants to leave and he wants to start his own business, that it was involved in technology in some way and that he was designing and creating an app for his business. And I asked him, you know, I was nervous to say all of that in one go, so I actually asked him in small, are you, are you happy at your job? And he's like, um, no, I'm not happy. And I said, are you wanting to leave and start your own company? He said, yes, yeah. I said, is it in technology? And he said, yep. And by now I'm like, I'm starting to bounce, I'm getting excited. And I'm like, do you want to create an app? And he's like, yes, 
that is what I want to do. And I think I was more excited than him. What he was, I'm running around the roof like, oh my goodness, guys! Like he told me about this guy, and he was so encouraged. I saw him about three months later, and he um, he had left his job. He said that the word had given him the courage to leave his job, that he knew God was on his work because God had said it over him. And he started his job and um, created this app. And again, it doesn't matter. You know, God has to take care of what we bring. All we have to do is be obedient to him. And God takes care of the rest. It's not your job. Once you've shared the word, it's not your job to do anything else because Holy Spirit is really good at doing that and you don't have to worry. And even when you get it wrong, God uses it. We've had a guy, we went up to him and said, hey, do you have a bad knee? He said, nope, but I am deaf in my ear. And a Muslim guy, and we prayed for him and completely, his ear completely healed and opened up. And that was from a word that was wrong. <laughs> but we were obedient and we loved. We put ourselves out there and we loved. And God used it. So God's going to use this. So what we're going to be doing, I want to encourage you over this next song to ask the Holy Spirit to give you a word of knowledge. So ask him, you might get pain in your body in an area. Ask him, feel, wait for him and feel it. He might give you a thought. I want you to post it on the live chat. And then if that's you that's got that pain or going through that thing that someone's put on there. It doesn't have to be about healing. It could be anything. If that's you, I want you to respond. And then we're going to pray for people. And I expect that people are going to get healed, that people are going to have chains broken today, and that God is going to move. So start doing it during this song. And then afterwards, we're going to come back and we're going to um, start reading through some of your comments. Um, but it won't be too late. Just keep posting. And I, I believe as well that even people that watch this in a week's time, that those words are still going to be relevant. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, that's been um, putting words up on the live chat. We are really, really excited. Um, there's lots of really cool ones on here. We're going to go through them together. Um, I just want to encourage you as well that if you're reading these words and you're thinking, that's me, I want you to reply on the live chat so that we can actually pray for you and we can, we can know that God is speaking to you um, and that we got the word of knowledge right. So that would be really, really helpful. Um, one of the ones I really love on here because it's super specific from Heidi, someone's had an accident that involved a hammer. So if that's you, we want to pray for you um, and just put that in the live chat and let us know if that's you. Um, we've had a couple of different words as well about um, back pain. So if that's you, put that on the live chat. Um, painful toothache is another one that's on here. Uh, we had a word from someone in here about having a headache in your forehead. If that's you, put it on the chat. Another one, I feel God saying that someone has been lied to recently and is, being, is feeling extremely sad about it and he wants to bring complete healing. If that's you, um, put it on the chat because we really want to we really pray for you. So we've had one here about uh, from Juliet. I've, I've had worsening sore back for a few years. So we would love to pray for that. Is there anyone else that wants to just put your name on there because we would love to join uh, you into our prayers. And if there's anyone in this room as well, then you can just put your hand up because we're going to pray for you too. Um, you are not left out and we're going to pray for that. So let's just pray because we've had a couple of different words about, um, about painful backs. So we're going to pray for that now. So if that's you, if you've got pain in your back, I just want to encourage you to just put your hand, if you can, on the place where it hurts. And we're just going to pray that right now in Jesus' name, I speak to your back and I tell it to be healed in Jesus' name, that every bit of pain would leave right now and never come back. I thank you, Jesus, that you're the healer and it's what you love to do. So right now, bring healing. In Jesus' name, amen. And if that's you, I want you to check your back. And if you feel any different or any better, post it on the live chat, because I expect that you will. And we want to hear about what God is doing because he's telling us these things for a reason. Like I said before, he's telling us because he 
He wants to heal you today. We've had a, a response as well. Um, Willow is struggling with teething um, and she's got really bad toothache. So let's, um, let's pray for Willow. And if there's anyone else that has a bad toothache or a problem with their teeth, we want to pray for you. So yeah, Holy Spirit, we just pray again. We thank you. We thank you that you're the healer. And we pray right now for complete healing over tooth pain. That it is not our portion in life. That's not what you've designed for us. And we declare your radical, powerful healing for toothache right now, especially for Willow God. And that by the end of the day today, we would see a difference. That she would no longer have any pain. And for anyone else that's experiencing it right now, that they would no longer have pain. In Jesus' name. Amen. I love this. There's so many on here as well. The one, one of the ones we've had in the room is about um, a, a headache in the forehead. Is there anyone else in this room that's had anything that they feel God is saying today to anyone? Any word of knowledge? Do you feel? You've got, why don't you come up and share with us? She had something like different things that I think belong together. Um, I first saw, I, like I live in one set and I saw, when I came here, I saw the market and there was, I, I just remembered that the, the stands and there was one stand that wasn't ready yet while everyone else, every other stand was ready. And um, I just got that combined with an anxiety. anxiety. And um, I just felt God is saying still time and I just think there's something uh, I, I just got you know I, I just think there's someone just building up a, um, a business um, don't don't think it's necessarily a store but it's like picture for for business and building up a business maybe comparing to other people um, but God is saying you still have time and I just think yeah just calm down God still still time to, to build it up Yeah, so God, God hears that. If that's you, he's with you right now. And we're told that Jesus intercedes for us as well. So you're not just getting my prayers, but you're getting Jesus's as well. His are really powerful. So um, we believe that God is going to meet you in that as well. And we've, we've had a story on here. Um, I don't have back pain, but I've got shoulder pain and it's now gone. Thank you, God. Praise God. Awesome. We've had other words about sciatica. Oh yeah, and Brenton has asked for prayer. So in Jesus' name, sciatica be healed right now. Every bit of pain be gone, that it would be completely straightened. Everything would be restored to the way it's supposed to be in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for Brenton. And for anyone else that has got sciatica or other, um, other pain, Lord, we, we claim this testimony from Kelly that you're doing it right now, you're working, God, you are healing people, and we claim this for Brenton in your name, Jesus, and for your glory, amen. Brenton, let us know how you get on. Does anyone else in the room have a word that they want to share? No, I don't believe you. Okay, Alex is gonna ask for one right now. Yeah, because he's really brave. I'll keep talking and you can give it in a sec. Okay, cool. He likes it when I push him into the deep end, it's okay. Um, yeah, so other words that we've had, a lot of them as well about emotional healing. God wants to come in and heal emotional healing. Um, Mookie put a word on, I've got a picture of a heart that's weighed down, heavy with chains by trauma and pain. The heart is bruised and battered, but the Lord says, let me in. Let me release you from those chains and the weight upon your heart. Oh, I love it. Freedom is here. In me you shall find freedom. In me you shall find the release you desire. In me you shall find your healing. 
preach it, Mookie. Love it. So I'm just going to pray. If that's you, if you're feeling weighed down by trauma, if you're feeling weighed down by pain, maybe from your childhood, Jesus wants to release you from that. You no longer have to be bound by that part of your life. And freedom is, you know, it's for freedom that you set us free. So let's step into that freedom today. So I'm just going to pray. If that's you, just receive um, and, yeah, just receive from God right now. So, Lord, we just pray for anyone that's experiencing trauma, that is experiencing the weight of pain that has been on their lives for years, Lord. And we just pray against the spirit of trauma on anyone's life that will be completely gone in Jesus' name. You no longer have dominion here. You no, no longer have reign here. And we just pray freedom over your life. That you would experience freedom, freedom, freedom. That you would know that that is no longer going to define you. It's no longer going to... Um, direct your life that you are going to experience complete freedom from that in Jesus name and I thank you Jesus that you're already doing it thank you Lord Alex what'd you get oh great thank you do you want to go first David Yes, I've got a story. It's not my story, actually, and it's a shame that Frida's not here to, to tell it to. She died, actually, three months ago today. Um, but um, I remember I, I was still working, so it's many years ago, <laughs> uh, and she had a dream one night of a, 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 a particular house in Ilford. She knew the name of the road, and she could see the house, and she said that, um, she had a particular word for the people in the house there. So she drove off and went down the road and actually saw the house that she saw in her dream. And she was a bit fearful because um, it had a large um, uh, front garden and there were a few cars in it. So she thought, hmm, this looks a bit um, uh, daunting. But nevertheless, she knocked at the door and she said, uh, and a guy opened the door and said, look, God has sent me here. Um, I feel I have a word for you. Does anybody in, in, in this house need healing? And the answer was no. Um, but she just said to them, oh, well, okay, fine, but I just want to tell you that God loves you. And she went away. But she wasn't daunted, and uh, after that, she had many times when God spoke to her and she shared with them, and people were really blessed. So, praise God. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. It's precious. Mm -hmm. I've got so just a good thing called the happy houses to people. Awesome. People have been walking more than before. <laughs> just following on from that, I've just got a sense that. Um, David's story was about Frida noticing a house. And I've got a sense that for many of us, we've been walking more recently than ever before and going out on walks and things. I believe, uh, particularly over this coming week or so, God's gonna point out particular houses to us. And I uh, just wanna encourage you, if you feel that God is pointing out a house to you, be praying for the person. And, uh, and maybe God wants you to walk up to the door and uh, knock on the door and bless them in some way. And so just be expectant this week for God to be pointing out, highlighting houses, and then take action like Lauren was saying earlier and, uh, and step out because God's gonna use that. Amen, I love that. Alex, take it away. You're so mean to me. Yeah. Um, I, uh, as you mentioned, uh, what Mookie said um, about the heart is I, got, I really got a sense that someone has got a literal hole in their heart and it's going to take, well, doctors said it was going to take surgery uh, or a heart transplant to fix that. And I felt God saying, today, it's not. And he's going to heal it now. And he has faith that they're going to heal it now. 
And so when you go for your next checkup, whoever this is, there will be nothing wrong. Come on. And it'll be a perfectly healed heart. Amen. Do you want to pray? Yeah, go on then. Cool. Father, we thank you for your spirit and we thank you for your willingness to heal. Thank you. We thank you for your grace that you have given us these spiritual gifts to channel your spirit into the healings. And Father, we just pray for any heart out there that has a hole in it, spiritually or physically, and we just pray your abundant healing over everybody that has got a hole in their heart. And Father, we pray healing right here, right now, and we command that wound to heal Amen. in your name, Jesus, Amen. and in your spirit. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Wow. Thank you, Alex. That's awesome. I want to encourage you guys to be reading all of the words of knowledge that are being posted on the live chat, because I can tell you there's, there's a whole bunch on there. And if that's you, reach out. You don't need me to pray for you. It's great, but you don't need it. You can read that word and say, God, this is my healing, or this is for me, and I'm claiming it, and receive it by faith today. And we are going to be really excited throughout the week. We want to hear your testimonies. So as you receive your healing this week, and as you go to your doctor's appointments and find out that nothing's wrong, and as you experience freedom from um, chains or pain that may have kept you bound before, that... Uh, we want to hear your testimony of that this week. And as you've gone to people's houses and you've, you've been praying for people's houses, we want to hear from you this week about all the things that God has done. So let's just, um, let's just thank God for what he's doing right now, for what he's going to do this week, and for the boldness and the courage to step out and to take a risk this week and to say, God, I'm just going to be obedient to you. I don't need to matter about how it's going to happen and I don't need to fix the problem. I've just got to go in there with love and share your word with someone. So yeah, Holy Spirit, we thank you for what you're doing right now. Jesus, thank you that you're healing bodies right now. Thank you for Kelly's testimony, Lord, that you have healed her back. And Lord, for every other uh, body pain right now, if that's you, just put your hand on the place where you have pain. Lord, we want to see complete freedom, complete healing in the name of Jesus right now, that there would be no pain in your body ever again. I speak to the pain and I tell it to leave in the name of Jesus. We want to hear your testimony, so post it on the live chat. God, I also pray that you would give us boldness and courage this week to step out and to take a risk for you. Lord, that we would follow you're leading that when we feel you say something, we would, um, we would pray about it, we would offer that word to someone. Lord, that we wouldn't worry about what we look like, that there would be no fear of man, that you would just take away that fear from us and you would give us the confidence that we have by being your sons and your daughters. And knowing that our confidence is in your faithfulness, not in our ability, not in our... Um, feeling if we feel like we deserve it or not. It's got nothing to do with us and everything to do with you, Lord, because it's all about your faithfulness. And so we receive from you today and we thank you for all the testimonies that are gonna be coming out of, um, of, of what you've done today in Jesus' name, I pray. We're just gonna, um, why don't we just Stay in this place right now of, of worship and adoration of who Jesus is. Sometimes it helps to take our eyes off of the problem and just focus on Jesus and let him love us. So let's just, and um, we're gonna sing one more song before we close the service today, but continue to post, we wanna hear from you. And um, yeah, thank you guys for engaging today and taking a risk and, um, yeah, for making me a very happy person and getting involved. So bless you guys, enjoy your week, and um, we just give all the glory to God for what he's going to do in Jesus' name. Amen.